But Bishop, you say it ain't no, no I mean, one says no father. But, but, but most Bahamians like to believe in the Son, man, and we, 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 we believe in the Holy Ghost too. Or we, not, we, some people say Holy Spirit, because the ghost could be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh, yes, I believe in the Father. God is the Father. The Son was simply the body of flesh and blood that God dwelt in. Uh, bishop, somebody on the phone will talk to you about something. Now, listen, and gentlemen, ain't nobody in cuss the bishop. I guess he don't mind. He said he'll take him on. Go I know, I don't mind at all. He's going to rough y'all up today here. Hello? Hey, relax, buddy. Relax. He's this is a good show, man. We love your bishop when he's talking. Oh. He's speaking to us Bahamians today. It's beautiful. Bishop. Yes, sir. Good afternoon to you, sir. You know, um, <laughs> there's a whole lot of uh, information running on here. One in one particular, why are you aligned with this? When uh, in, in church, we recite every, every, every day, Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us in this now the hour of our death. Is that an abomination statement or is Mary really the mother of God? That's no. question. That's no. no. Okay. No. God, God don't have no mother. God is eternal. God always was. God always have been. Have no beginning of life. Have no beginning of days. No end of life. Mary was yes, not sir. the mother of God. Mary was the mother of the Messiah, the Son of God, which was the flesh and blood body that God manifest himself in to redeem us back to the holy estate that we lost in the Garden of Eden. So is it abominable? It's a statement of sheer abomination. God ain't never had a mother. Final final question. In Job 38 and 32, uh, the Creator talks about Mazarus, Acturus, Pleiades, and Orion. Have you any idea what they are? So talking about the stars of the elements. And why are we not talking about the stars, but we're talking about uh, success financially, then we could look up and see the majesty and all the money that's sitting up there. <clears throat> well, is it because that people's priorities are wrong? It is written that the love of money is the root of all evil. While some have coveted after, they have erred from the faith and have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So the human family priorities have been shifted, and religion is a contributing factor to people loving yeah. money more than loving yeah. God. So, so Lucifer or Satan was not the root of all evil. Money was before Lucifer. Oh, no. Lucifer, which is that spirit of evil that influenced men to work for him. Most preachers are spokesmen for Satan. What? So who is the root? Who is the root? The money or Lucifer? No. Satan would be the root, but the love of money. The love of money is the root or the source or the foundation. So that source have to influence you somehow, some way. So if you look at preachers, the way they preach money, they get their teaching or they influence from Satan himself. That's why they teach the love of money and they don't teach the love of God. If you, because if you love God, you'll love yourself. Um, man, I love you already. Man, listen, no one loves this man more than me. What the? <laughs> what else you want to say? Ladies and gentlemen, Apostle General Jennings from the, what you said, the organization? No, First no. Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, any access? Uh, how can people reach out to you all of you? I know you're not the secretary for the church, but. Well, they can go to our website, uh, www.truthofgod.com. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you all people something here. Um, I'm not telling you, but you're telling, you always saw people on your telecast and your YouTube programs to leave. The churches. Oh, yes. I tell them, leave their churches. But you can't be doing that. You're going to cut back on people's um, uh, good feelings on the weekend or on the Saturday. Let the day. preachers, let the preachers go get a job and go to work like everybody else. Get and stop job. living off the feet. The, the scripture said that the servant is worthy of his reward. And what is the reward of the preacher? Is it is it the money from the people or is it eternal life with God? Money from the people and a new car every two or three years. <laughs> now, that's what preachers would like for you to believe. And... Uh, what you said is so true because the way the preachers have presented God and presented the scriptures, they want people to believe that right here is heaven. Right here. No, no. If this is heaven, I wouldn't want it. You're going up there? The streets of gold? I, I, I pray God that when the Lord come that he count me worthy to go back with them because heaven and earth is going to pass away. And everything you have, all your cars, all your gambling associates, all your money, all the women, everything. No woman? Oh, no, you're going to pass away, brother. you telling me I won't be able to do nothing in heaven except sing all day and praise the Lord? The Bible didn't say you're going to sing all day. The Bible never said you're going to sing a half a day. 
What do you say? To be with God is more better than be here in this life. And streets of gold and milk and honey? Well, do you believe that mumbo jumbo is possible? Uh, I don't believe in mumbo jumbo. I believe in scripture. But streets of gold, milk the, and honey? The Bible says that New Jerusalem is prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Mm -hmm. And there are 12 gates and there are 12 foundations which have the name of the 12 apostles. My interest is simply to be with God throughout all eternity. I'm not looking at what the city is made out of. I'm not looking at the material that God used. The very fact of being with God himself and escaping everlasting damnation, the pit of hell, is the greatest reward a man or a woman can ever obtain. You know, the apostle, I'm looking at you direct in your eyes, you know, and like you'd like to say, ain't I right? <laughs> well, listen, when I see you on the, on, the, on the screen and I see you doing whatever you do, you do this natural or you just, this is a part of the Benny Hinn syndrome? Or the, the crest, what do you call a man? Crest low? Crest low dollar? No, you just call him something different. Crest low penny or crest low nickel? Oh, you know the man. And then you yes. call that man uh, DJ Snakes? Yes, TD Snakes. It's Jake's man. No, it's Snakes. I want you like, oh, Williams to do you know. It's Jake's. <laughs> you say Snakes, thing. Well, the reason why I say TD Snakes is because a snake is subtle. And he's subtle and bamboozling the people and lying to the people and getting the money out of the people. If you read the scriptures, every messenger of God was a warner. He warns the people to escape the wrath of God and then tell them what to do to escape it. No. T.D. Jakes and these other television evangelists don't warn people about nothing. They don't preach against no wrong. They don't preach against, against no wickedness. Every television evangelist that come out of America have the same message. God got a miracle with your name on it, and God don't want you to be broke. That's the prosperity message that's all across America. The preachers in the Bahamas and through the Caribbean and in Europe who look at these television preachers have been inspired by that form of hypocrisy. You kind of suggested that some of the people there in the Caribbean oh, and yes. the Bahamas are oh, yes. prosperity. I, oh, a lot of these preachers here, you go into practically any church in the Bahamas and you'll see this tradition that they pick up. You're right. They all pick that foolishness up from from uh, foolishness. America. It's foolishness. So when the pastor say, "Look here, um, the first ten persons with a hundred dollars uh, contribution, exactly, or the first two hundred, it's foolishness because they you get a special blessing, boss. This is what they got you believing. They got you believing that your heavenly blessing hangs on the amount of money you give. Well, God ain't no cheap God, so you can't go and go have no one dollar. No, no, that is not true. Because Jesus said, "The poor you have with you always." So I don't really want a God that can't do nothing for me unless I have money. Listen, Nathan, I might know with y'all, but you know, the God I serve would do everything for me. Call me the line. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Woody. Hey, what's up? Hey, good afternoon to your good guest. Yes, sir. That's where I have a question to ask you. God, God is all right. Everything is nothing added, nothing taken away. It's God, right? All right. So, I mean, God encompasses good and evil, right? No. No, by God is not evil at all. Okay. So God encompasses life and death. Yes, God gives life and God gives death. Okay. So that means God covers the, the full spectrum of like a human's body and every other form of life because it's all birth and death, right? What is that now? Repeat that. Every form of life that exists is there's the birth and the death. Yes. Every form. True. So the, the the embodiment of God is life and death. All right. So when we look at it, metaphorically speaking, you look at life, the breath of life is given by God. Mm -hmm, I agree. So the, the breath would, 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 would come from God is in, in here, like, I assume, because when you're born, you came from God. When you die, you know, you're going eh? mm -hmm. Hello? Yes, I'm listening. So exhale is a representation of the devil, because when you expire, you don't inhale, you exhale. When you say, did you, I'm, I'm, I want to make sure I, I heard you correctly. You say when you exhale, that represent the devil? Yes, sir, because of everything in life has an opposite. And, 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 and the only way we can live is between these two opposites. We vibrate from one to the other, day and night, inhale, exhale, life and death, male and female, up and down, back and forth, every single opposite. There's always an opposite. Every single opposite, right? And through these opposites, we exist. We, we exist right smack dab in the middle. 
when, when it comes to our hearing, we can't hear every single, every single frequency you can hear so far, but then it gets so high, you don't hear it, then it gets so low, you don't hear it, but there are switches that can, you know. So, so we are in limbo. Well, I tell you what, we are actually, we are actually in the middle of the pendulum and it's, the pendulum swings from right to left, but I'm a bit of a, a bit so what, is your, what is your persuasion, the nomination persuasion? I'm a heretic. A what? Heretic. A heretic? Yeah. But, but I mean, like, sir, what I'm trying to... Well, you, well, you grew up as what? A Catholic, an Anglican, a Baptist, or what, 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 what denomination? I, born, I grew up as a human being. Oh, man. With a free mind. You sound like a Jar Rastafari? Ever living no, I'm not a Jar Rastafari. But what do you stand for today? I stand for reality. And the truth is that when we're looking at God, God is everything. You can't take nothing away from God. You can't have nothing to God. God is all good, evil, and all. So, you Apostle, know, is God good is and evil, like some people say? They say hold on, hold on a minute, caller. They say yeah. God, it is written in the Bible, God said to somebody, and I, I, I saw you having Williams with you. God I'm said, to meet Williams, but I, I, I'm mad with you. Well, Williams, I, I think he's on his way here now. He's on Williams coming? I don't know whether he's going to make it here in time. Williams will be in the Bahamas? Oh, yes, he'll be here. And you'll be get, delivering the word this weekend? Yes, we'll be here uh, tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow night and Sunday. So, Williams will be here. Um, hey, you know coming? Okay, go ahead quickly. Let me let the apostle. Yeah, yeah, quickly, here. quickly, yeah. Yeah, so what I'm making conclusion, what I'm basically saying is that in this life that we live, we can say as much as we like. But the reality is that when we live every day, we go through every single extreme. Every opposite we go through. When we eat, we got to go to the bathroom. When we drink, we got to go to the bathroom. When we born, we got to go in the grave, you know? And in this real life that we live, I mean, there are dogmatic writings that say certain well, things. Right? What I want you to do, call is put something to the, to the apostle, man. His time is limited I'm here. I'm putting something to the apostle, but he keeps cutting in, Mr. Bodhi. He's Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Special. Yeah, what I'm saying is that in this life that we live, I mean, like preachers and teachers and all of those, right? The closest we could ever get to God is to, to knowing ourselves and knowing what is surrounding us and, and understanding these creatures, man. Because when we, when we look at this life from time we were born, you're given the riddles of mercy. What do you think about the, the biblical principles that are being espoused by the truth of God? Well, I, the, what, what is basically they say that they, they say that they say based on scripture, there yeah, is no such on, there's no such mumbo jumbo as the Trinity. Based on what is written in scripture and based on what is written in all of the dogmatic books, are nothing but writings from men because God don't need no man to justify God. You know what? The real God is justified by man knowing himself mm. and understanding what is around him okay. and understanding, I mean, consciously. Okay, now, call I'm not going to limit your time, but i got to let the apostle yeah, you. Yeah, And you can call me back about five minutes before the program ends. All right, all right, all right, all right. God said, look here, man. Behold, I made good and evil. Yes. And if I love Esau, Esau I love, uh, love Jacob. Jacob and hate Esau. Jacob, you know I love and Esau, I hate. You know it. Mm -hmm. I ain't quite as good as you yet, but another year or two. When they wrap a bit of Philadelphia, they're going to put you in retirement. I'm going to take over the place. <laughs> but listen, why would God say that? Why would God say he hate somebody? He's dealing with the deeds of the person. Jacob I love and Esau I hate. A lot of preachers present God from this weak perspective. Weak? Yes, they present God in a very weak way. As if God does not get angry. As if God does not frown upon anything. And as if God don't hate nothing. So this is why you find a lot of preachers present God from only this perspective of he only loves. No, God loves and God hates. It's a soft tea. So, yeah. and if you look at the way Hollywood try to put a spin on religion or put a spin on God. Thing under the sun. And this is the way preachers present it. That God... He's not a God of judgment. He's not a God of terror. He's no, not a man. He's not a God that will afflict you. He's not a God that will bring you down if need be. So he says, Jacob, I love you. Esau, I hate. So all the deeds of man that's rebellious against God, God hated because God made us in his image and God didn't design us or make us to live a life that's opposite from his agenda or his divine will and his divine purpose. for you to defile it. So this is why the scriptures is here to govern man, to teach man how to live and conduct himself. And he respect and honor this temple that God gave him. And it's not like you're going to have it always. Your body is just something lent to you for a period of time. And like the caller said, eventually you will die.
-hmm. and your temple will dissolve. Right. So the question is, what are you going to do with your body while you live? Mm -hmm. Are you just going to please yourself, smoking, drinking, gambling, lying, running? Well, you never did those things? Oh, no. Man, listen. There's no I never, I never, I never smoke and I never drink because the time. You never favored the ladies. Oh, I didn't chase women. Who? I never chased women. Did they chase you? Oh yeah, they chased me, but I never chased women. Did you succumb to the temptation? If only once. No, 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 I did not. Uh, I, I, I was looking for my Bible here. You believe in the King James Version, right? Oh yes, I, I do. Find it, the, the the enemy. Uh, I, every I every office. every man in the Bible didn't yield to temptation. Oh no, Joseph didn't yield. This, this man is an ordained minister in one of our denominations locally, Reverend Michael Jackson. I love the name, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Did you know Michael Jackson? Uh, I heard of him. But you it, didn't meet him? You didn't shake his hand? You didn't lay hands on no, him? No, it wasn't nothing for it was, You didn't I pray didn't, for him? I didn't consider him no one for me to meet. But, I mean, T.J. Snakes uh, was laid hands on by your good friend up in Atlanta, Georgia, who just opened a multi Oh, the, dollars are you talking about, oh, yes, when Tyler, Medea, when, Medea, when Medea laid hands, Medea on, laid hands, hands on him. Yes. And uh, T.J. fell right out. Yes, he did. He fell out and signed. Good thing some people caught him in the back. <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, Jackson. Bishop. Uh, I'm Jackson. Who are you, man? Tell the people who you are, man. Please. Yeah, uh, Reverend Jackson McIntosh. Uh, from the New Destiny, but the church called from the New Life Mansion Ministry. Church, uh, church of God. Of, yes, sir. Uh, um, I want to go back to the Trinity. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Genesis, when God said, "Let, Let us." us. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. What was he talking about? If you go, that's in Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man in yeah. our image after our likeness. Yeah. And for years, the Catholics and other religions says that God was talking to the Son, and then God also was talking to the Holy Ghost. So then I brought the argument to every preacher, plain and simple. How many creators do we have? We only got one creator. Then I asked another question. Do God need help to make anything? God says he stretched off the heavens alone. And spread for broad the earth by myself. So if you look at Genesis 1 26, the 27th verse really self explains verse 26. 26 says, Let us make man after our image, after our likeness. Verse 27 says, So God, G O D, made man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. So verse 27 pretty much clears up verse 26 and shows you there's only one that made man, one that made the heavens. One that made the universe. So when he says after the fall, the man is now like us. Mm -hmm. What does he mean? When he said the man is like us, who said the man was like us? Is that what God said, or is that what Satan said? No, that's what God said. The man is like us. Quote the scriptures, man. Knowing good and evil. When man knowing good from evil just simply means man have the knowledge that God have. Because the only one that had the knowledge of good and evil was God. Man never had the knowledge of both good and evil. He just had the knowledge of good. But when man fell, he was introduced to evil. But he didn't say, he is like me. He said, he is like us. But the Bible says in the first chapter of the book of Ephesians that God worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Unto his own will, not our will. So, right, of his own will. So if you say... The us would mean it's more than one God. What God is with the Almighty? But who said I am that I am? I mean, come on, man. The I am that I am mean he's what he wants to be. I am is, is singular. So I mean, he didn't say we are that we are. Let's so, go back to the Great Commission. When yes. Jesus said, go ye therefore into all the world. Yes. And baptize all men mm -hmm. in the name of the Father, mm -hmm. in the name of the Son. And what, what, what is that well, first and foremost, the scriptures didn't say that. It didn't say baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. It didn't say that. It says baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. It never says, it never pluralized name. It gets it baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I'm a son. At uh, birth. The, the names, the, the names. I'm, I'm a son at birth. I'm a husband at marriage, and I'm a father because my wife has children. But if I tell you to do something in my name, you my not, name, you're not gonna say husband, you're not gonna say son, you're not gonna say father. So when the Bible says baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you can't baptize in that name until you come into the knowledge of that name. So Matthew 28:19 was fulfilled in Acts 2:38. 
they were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, which is the name of Jesus Christ. You don't have no one in the Bible doing what preachers are doing today, baptizing people and saying over them, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. All the apostles understood what Jesus said, and they all baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, which is the fulfillment of Matthew 20 and 19 of what you just quoted. In the reference to the unpardonable sin. What's that now? In reference to the unpardonable sin in the Bible, Jesus said, <clears throat> You speak an evil thing against the father or the son. It could be it could be forgiven you. But he who is speaking against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven him in this life, nor the life to come. What, what, is, what is going on? Let me make a correction on your quotation. The scripture says if you blaspheme against the Son of Man, you can be forgiven. He said, But if you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, you cannot be forgiven. It didn't say if you blaspheme against the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The scripture just says, if you blaspheme against the Son of Man, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, you can be forgiven. But if you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit, which is God. Hey, hallelujah. Because the Holy Ghost is God. There's only one spirit. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 and 4 and 4 and 5, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Bible says you're baptized by one spirit into one body. And John 4, 24 says God is a spirit. God is the Holy Ghost. So when you blaspheme against the spirit, which is God himself, you can't be forgiven in this life, nor the life to come. And he said, and he did say, in that day shall you know, I and the Father are one. Yes. So simply means that, God, is that. Is that two or is it one? God is going to be manifested as one. So are you saying it's two gods or is it one God? No, Which is I, it? I'm saying in support of what you are saying. Oh, okay. In that Jesus said. Mm -hmm. The Father are one. So one, not two. Yeah, so the God, the Word, mm -hmm. God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, is basically the manifestations of God in the realm of humanity. Oh, yes. That's the man. You are, the word you use is excellent because that's God manifesting himself in many ways. God, The manifestation of God works in many ways. He manifests himself in the Son, meaning in flesh. He manifests himself as the Holy Ghost. He manifests because the Holy Ghost is the Comforter, which is the Spirit of God or the peace of God. So the manifestation of God comes in many forms. One, many manifestations from one God. Now, in the story of Job, God was angry with his, his friends because they spoke errantly about God in areas that they did not know. Mm -hmm. And so far, and build out, and what was the other one that God asked them, you know, said, you better go and get some bullets and go to my servant Job and let me pray. Mm -hmm. Because basically, you do not represent the truth in reference to me. Mm -hmm. And it seems that you're saying that uh, a lot of preachers aren't representing the truth about God. True. A lot of preachers don't represent the truth about God. even a subject taught in church anymore True. when i came up the fear of god was taught the fear of going to hell was taught god is not even a subject at all the way god is presented now is based upon he will do for you based upon how much money you give him uh, he will do for you or you are considered blessed based upon the size house you have the size car you drive and the amount of money you have in your bank account this is the way God is being preached now. True. So therefore, God is not being properly represented as one that should be feared and respect and honored and one we should humble ourselves to and give our life to. The new, or should I say, the new God in church, in most churches, is the dollar, True. is money, is equivalent to the calf that Israel made after God brought Israel out of the land of Egypt. Now, the... First, that's a serious indictment. The, the first Christ of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the church that was started, I think when you were 15, when you started to get the, uh, I guess, controversial understanding by the traditional church, that what you were saying yes, sir. Uh, against the Trinitarian concept was, you know, maybe something that was causing concern, especially with your uncle, who, who I think uh, sort of gave you your first opportunity. I support it here. Yes, he did. Uh -huh. 
You mean he went against his uncle? <laughs> he was harassing the church? <laughs> my my great uncle was where um, I raised, I came up under him. Yes. And uh, he was an apostolic preacher. Right. He believed in one God, in the baptism, in the name of Jesus Christ. He, he was firmly against the Trinity. Mm -hmm. He knew it was one God, even if he could not explain it in detail, he held firmly it was one God. So not only did I get that foundation from my uncle, first and foremost, I got it from home because my mother and father was firm believers that God was one. So I was blessed with that foundation from home. Now, uh, uh, Jackson and, and Apostle, I don't want to interrupt you all, but Sammy, we have to go to a break. Okay, Sammy says we have to go to a break. We're talking to Apostle General Jennings. And ladies and gentlemen, you can.